We have a video. View. Hey guys, your old pal Cenable here. And I want to make a video about why, to this day, after the time in history when, when it was founded, we still need communism. Uh, now, I'm going to go ahead to let you know. See the best. For any of you who don't know, communism is the idea of a nation sharing the wealth. And while some people call it distributing, um, if I were to ever start a country with a communist government, wink, wink, wait 12 years, um, I'd probably make it, like, have these company, like, these buildings, which you can put in money for other people to have. You know, kind of a share-share. Now, I know not all communist states are like this, but still, distributing is just as fine as sharing it. Well, I'm not explaining why we need communism. I'm just giving the difference between distributing. Because they technically are, because, hey, a parent could make their child share a toy or something. Anyway, now on to why we actually need communism. Like, actually need, oh, it's cold out here. Um, I have two reasons. They go inside. One, poor people, sh we really can't have poor people. It's not good for a bunch of for like a whole class of people to be poor people need money we can't just let pe people uh, be around just be homeless less because as they can't get jobs money is important so that's another reason we need communism and secondly some people might say oh we have welfare Welfare just promotes lazy people, and I don't know, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure welfare, especially down in the United States, costs a bit of moolah. So yeah, all those morons saying that communism is the same as welfare, you can go leave because you are just an absolute moron. Just look up the definition of that. I'm sorry I got a little heated, but... <laughs> when people say it's the same as welfare, I get really angry. Anyway, yeah, that's why we still need communism. Bye. My brother and I, we work hard. But when we hit the road of my F-150, we work smart. So much to learn about, it'll make you want to shout with me. Okay, watch. The only thing 13 year old Logan Holes of Sibley, Iowa likes more than the sound of one of his over 100 vacuum cleaners is the feeling of one in his hands. I feel joy when I vacuum. I always vacuum at least three or four times a day just to get that nice feeling. He gets up in the morning, he cranks the vacuum on, vacuums his bed. <coughs> then when he comes downstairs, vacuums the living room. And then through my living room, through the dining this room, This has gotta be... <laughs> gotta be a stage. And I will come home from school and vacuum again. It makes me feel kind of annoyed because there's always a vacuum running around the house and I can't really concentrate on what I want to do. I usually like to go to other places to vacuum. My mom works at the hair salon, so I like to go there. He likes to come down here, obviously, and do some vacuuming of the hair. And of course, we need it done daily. And so he will come down and do it daily here. And then when I'm done at my mom's salon, at least it's youth. My dad's a fire chief, so I vacuum the fire hall. I like having Logan down here at the fire hall because firemen are the dirtiest guys in the world sometimes, which can't help. And he's 
takes care of it. He's like my maid, if you will. But he makes sure he cleans. I have the cleanest trucks in Northwest Iowa. And if he runs out of trucks to do and the floors to do, you'll be out in the bay sucking up the cracks. And I keep on vacuuming until it's all done. And then I repeat every day. You should be getting some move on. Sibley is a small town. Everyone knows everyone, and they may you should not do know this for some like, moolah. Hey, your son's the vacuum kid. Next thing you know, we're receiving vacuums from these people that were broken, and uh, most of the people thought it was just to let him play with them and experiment with them and things like that. But now he's repairing them and handing it back to them. So here's your vacuum back, and they're going, "I just gave it to you to play with. I didn't expect it in return in working condition." I wanted to add to my collection. Hey, Brenda. Hi, Logan. Got a vacuum for you. So, I created a business. Logan's Miracle Works Vacuum Cleaner Repair. So there we go. Should we? Yeah, no. Okay, thank you. Every time I fix a vacuum cleaner, I feel like a detective trying to find out a crime. Screws. I usually try to dig deep far into the vacuum. If I find something odd looking, I always take that apart and put a new one back in, and then voila. The most important part about fixing a vacuum cleaner is having to test the vacuum cleaner to see if it runs. I use glitter as my test dust because it's one of the hardest substances to vacuum up. Guys, I know you think all of those puzzle heads are fake, but today, but today, I today finally found the I game. Finally found the game. The King's Return. That's right, guys. The same game you see in those ads. I've seen enough of those videos. Today, we're gonna play it. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. failed again. Oh my God, I lost my treasure. No, no, all right, no. look, it's a little bit more challenging than I thought, but download it now and give it a try. I ain't downloading shit. In a typical suburban neighborhood outside Las Vegas, an average American family is just starting its day. Dylan, JJ! But this family is going to have to do some heavy lifting. Good girl, there we go. To push their bodies above and beyond average. Because we're the strongest family in the world. I could. Yeah. Come on, honey. Almost there. Nice. Nice. Come on. Nice, Nick, Callie, Dylan, okay, and Jessica Best so you can do it. train their bodies up to 240 hours each week. Two. Good. Three. Good, JJ. While some pediatricians warn against weight training for kids, 11 year old Dylan routinely deadlifts. 130 pounds. I do like working out. It's like my coffee Pretty in good. the morning. If I don't do it, I don't feel right. Squat down. Lower your butt. Pull back on your heels. Pull back on your heels and stand up. Pull, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back, pull back. You got it. Stand up. Imagine laundry. Like that. What is it like? That's pretty close. Dylan's sister, Jessica, is a normal 46-pound, five-year-old girl. Oh my gosh, JJ. Experts recommend children oh, her age train with one-pound weights. Whoa. But she can lift 100 pounds. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> nice job, baby. Wow, you're awesome. People think it's strange that Jessica can lift double her body weight. But These captions are way too big. She's not hurting anything. I'm gonna be like my money because she's pretty and strong. Ooh, I feel a little baby callous. Let me see. Look, I see him. Look at that. Our family is normal in the way we love one another, but we're not normal physically. And if that makes us bad, then I'm, I'm sorry. Then we're bad. The family obsession <laughs> looks like Shrek. Obsession with muscle began way back when Nick was just a high school wimp. My sophomore year, I was five three. And 130 pounds, and I went through a huge growth spurt. At the exact time, time I found weights and powerlifting. Sure, fine. Yeah, nice, Nick. Good job, baby. Nick is a regular competitor on the strongman circuit, 
where rivals perform feats of strength, and where Nick met professional strong woman, Callie. He walked out of the elevator, our eyes locked. Obviously, the first thing that I noticed about Nick were his physical attributes. <laughs> There's nothing more sexy than a big, strong guy. Period. But the best don't spend all day in the gym. To replace what they burn off while working out, Dylan and Jessica consume nearly twice the recommended calories for their age. Nick eats anywhere between 10 and 15,000 calories in a day. If I don't constantly feed, I just won't maintain this mass. Here's 12 eggs, and this is what Nick will go through in one day. And that's just for Nick. The whole family eats 10 dozen eggs every single week. Mm -hmm. You must feed your mom what you say. Your mama's so short, you can see her legs on her driver's license. Oh, that's funny! F you kids! What the <laughs> fuck? She just said that. <laughs> Your mama's so stupid, she thought seaweed was something that fish smoke. Your mama's so ugly, when she looked out her window, she got arrested for moving. Your mama, so old, she sat next to Moses in third grade. But see, I think Moses was a slave, so like, I don't think Moses ever really got educated. Your mama's so dumb. She stared at orange juice for 30 minutes because it's <laughs> concentrates. Your mama's so ugly, Hello Kitty said goodbye. <laughs> I like that one. Bye, bitch. Your mama's so old, when I told her to act her age, <laughs> she died. Stay. Your mama's so ugly, her reflection said, I quit. These are too clean. That could be like, I wouldn't f your mama, something like that. Can't even with some of Mars. Yeah, that's the thing. I need my glasses. Your mama's so blind. I don't have no fat, let's see. Uh, your mama's so stupid she got fired from M&M factory for throwing out the W's. Their M&M's that have W's? Your mama's so ugly, when she came out of the haunted house, she had an application. Damn, ugly to the point where she working at a haunted house for free minimum wage. Woo, your mama's so stupid when Terminator said, I'll be back. <laughs> she actually waited. <laughs> I would wait for Arnold Schwarzenegger, to be honest. What she actually waited. <laughs> I would wait for Arnold Schwarzenegger, to be honest with you. Your mama's so stupid, she thinks a quarterback is a refund. That's a good one. Like, give me my quarterback, bro. <laughs> give me my quarterback. They need to be more 21st century joke, you know, more gender equality type of your mama. Your mama looks like your papa. <laughs> How about that one? Cheers to our summer lineup, Bud Light. My name is Nathaniel. I'm 27 years old. And I'm in a serious relationship with my car. Good morning, baby. My hand 
handsome man. Nathaniel is in a committed relationship with a car that mm. is named mm. Chase. He met Chase in a resale lot about five years ago. But it was love at first sight. His body was in his He met Chase in a resale lot about five years ago. Wait, let me get for him. This. <laughs> but it was love at first sight. His body and then his interior and everything just together just seemed to fit. And I just felt an instant connection. Nathaniel's obsession first developed as a teenager when he would build model cars. But he didn't find true love until he met Chase. I find this part of him the most sexy just because of the subtle lines and curves. I'll give him a kiss here. And just kind of caress him down the side. My initial reaction was I was kind of shocked. It was kind of weird because it's just hard to understand. When I started collecting roaches, I only had five, and now I have thousands. Roaches because when they crawl my arms, they tickle me, and when I hold them, they make me real happy. Uh, I could do without them, but she really likes them, so. I absolutely don't love the cockroaches, but I can deal with them. I do have freak out moments every once in a while. <laughs> But overall, you know, I've come to accept Shelby's passions. I love air freshener. I love it. Absolutely. What I love about drinking air freshener is the taste. <laughs> taste there's a million air fresheners out there but the one that i like is fresh linen i've tried other scents but i don't like them none of them taste like they say they smell cinnamon is not cinnamon oh really apple crisp is like dirt Chance. i've got to have fresh linen i literally crave it in the last three years, there's not a day where I've not had it. Casting is putting a cast on myself. <laughs> I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. In the last three years, there's not a day where I've not had it. Casting is putting a cast on myself. I'm perfectly fine, perfectly healthy. I like the feeling of the cast around me. I've done like two full arm casts, two full leg casts. I've done two full leg casts and an arm cast. I've put on so many different casts, it's ridiculous. What I love about casting is it just feels so amazing and so snug and so comfortable. It gives me like this high that I just can't really get any other way. My earliest memory of casting was definitely in early grade school. At about six or seven years old, I used to steal all of my parents' toilet paper and I used to wrap up my legs in toilet paper to mimic a cast. When I was 12 years old, I broke my arm rollerblading and I got my first cast. I got a lot of attention with a cast on. And uh, it's just kind of been an ongoing process ever since then to just learn as much as I can about it. I absolutely love the attention I get. I use crutches, I use a scooter, I use a wheelchair, whatever it takes. And then I love going out in public and then just seeing everybody like, oh, that, that gawk look, you know, it's just amazing. I sting myself on my hip, my elbow mm. on a finger, mm. my ankle, my forehead on the tip of my nose. Mm. Mm. The most I've ever given myself was between 15 and 20 in my left hip. I really love stinging myself with bees. 
Margaret has been addicted to bee stings for the past 10 years. Her addiction started innocently as a way She's the reason all the bees return. To relieve her <laughs> arthritis. In search of relief from the pain, Margaret turned to the beehives in her backyard. I had read how people have been using it to relieve certain pain symptoms. The first time that I saw when in the 1800s on myself it didn't hurt as bad as i thought it would and it just got easier every time <sighs> when i was pregnant i used to take pieces of tissue and dip, dip them in bleach and take No. I'm like peel, but my nutritionist and doctor they they made me stop doing it, and and I thought it was just because I was pregnant and it'll go away. But Gloria's bleach addiction didn't go away, and she's even taken it a step further. Every morning, Gloria now adds bleach to her bath water. Every time I take a shower and or a bath, I have to use bleach. I have to use it. I first run the water. Then I take the bleach and I pour it in a tub. It's not a certain amount that I use. I just pour until I feel like it's enough. My name is Keisha, and I'm expecting my first child. And I love sniffing and chewing dirty diapers. That is the shit. It has to have pee in it. It has to. <laughs> Have pee in it. The heavier ones, I have more pee, small better. Yeah. Mmm, this one's soft. I love it. It just tastes amazing. I have one while I'm cooking in the kitchen. I have one in my drawers. I have one while I'm sleeping. I keep some in my trunk. I keep some in my pocketbook. No, oh. for real. This is good. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, continue. I have about 200 fans. I have pedestal fans. This is a Holmes pedestal fan. And the reason I bought it, these blades table fans. This is a Fanimation Urban Jet. It kind of looks like the fans from a 1950s Cadillac. Tower fans. Tower fans are slim, so they can fit in tight spaces, yet they move a lot of air. Box fans. This is a beautiful treasury. Perfect example of a box fan treated well. It's got a very great sound. Listen to it on low. You should be having quiet. It's beautiful. It's like a bird humming. Hassock fans. A Hassock fan, at first it thinks, oh, that's just a footstool. Well, actually, as you can see when I lift it up, there's a fan, motor, and blade. Well, I always had a rule about not collecting ceiling fans. This is a 1980 <laughs> Hunter original. This is a Hunter model 22450. This is a portable ceiling fan. Notice how it twists like that? My first thought was... When will it stop? So you've done a lot of traveling. I've been, I've been around. Um, mm. Would you go with like someone like me? Because I'm old enough to be your mother, definitely. Maybe yeah, old enough to be your grand grandmother. Well, you're pretty well, you're enough to take home, though. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Let's dance. You want to dance? Yes. 
Yes, you are. Oh. Yeah. And this one? Thank you. And this one? The date with Karen was incredible. She was 100% my type. I had a wonderful time with Kyle. And I've had such an amazing time. I just don't want it to end. Position yet? <sighs> Working on it. What's taking so long? I thought you knew this place. Don't rush me. I just did enough. Wait, there it is. Awesome. Now I can go and get my gelatin for free. <laughs> to acquire the massive amount of coupons. Yeah. Well, I can get the gelatin for free. <laughs> Again. It's like on the ankle. They need to score great deals. Many extreme couponers spend thousands of dollars a year on newspapers. But North Carolina homemaker Desiree Young. Which they don't really save anything. Has a cheaper solution. If you want to save money, dumpster dive. <laughs> My name's Desiree, and I'm addicted to couponing. I wish I had a coupon for everything in the world. I spent absolutely nothing for every product in here. <laughs> it hurts me to pay for anything. For Desiree to put together deals for free products, she needs to collect massive amounts of coupons. And there is one place in her town that has a never-ending supply. All right, so I'm going to step inside the dumpster and see what I can find. Oh, MG. Ah! <laughs> Coupons to me are money, and you wouldn't believe how much money people throw away in those dumpsters. So this is an awesome, awesome coupon. These weekly coupon hunts have allowed Desiree to build a stockpile of over 2,400 household and grocery items, occupying her entire spare bedroom. This collection includes 45 bottles of dish soap, 105 deodorants, 125 bottles of hair and body wash, and 480 razors. The retail cost of all of these razors is close to $4,000, and I paid absolutely nothing for them. How could you be? Stop. Do it to people who need for 23 cents a box. I will never run out of deodorant and shampoo and body wash. I'm never gonna stink. <laughs> if I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you Trevor. If I um, ever am pressed for space, that's when I will donate or tell my neighbor, come over and sh mm -hmm. shop if I need more room. Mm -hmm. Only oh, in space. What a green little pick. Ability to save an average of 90% on all of her groceries did not always come naturally to Desiree. I remember looking at coupons and I was very overwhelmed. Well, then my son was born and that's when we started living paycheck to paycheck. We would buy groceries and then have like $20 to live off of. And then when I started getting into coupons, people on online forms showed me that if I kept to it and dedicated to it, that I would start saving more and more money. There is a negative side. Of course, you're gonna have to put a lot of time and effort into it. I dedicate about 60 hours to couponing each week. With Desiree's couponing occupying more time than most jobs, the busy homemaker must keep a very tight daily schedule. On Monday from 9 to 11.30, I will be doing my online prep. I do check my website every hour just in case. Oh, 
there was a new deal posted on Tuesday from 2 to 6 p.m. is when I'll hit the recycling bins at the local school. On Wednesday, I'll be doing more. More than two. More online prepping and ordering. On Thursdays, from 9 to 1.30 a.m. is when I'll be doing my deal finding. Friday, from about 12 to 5 p.m. is when I'll be doing major shopping. Getting Saturday, I'll be doing my binder clean out and getting rid of it. Then Sunday is when I'll be finding my papers. So that is a 60-hour coupon week that is jam-packed full of prepping, organization, and shopping. Today, Desiree is shopping at her local supermarket's biggest sale of the year. And since her nonstop couponing means she rarely has time to socialize, Desiree is bringing her friend Blair along so they can catch up and she can help with a haul. I'm expecting my grocery bill to be over $1,000, and I would like to get it down to under $55. With six carts full, North Carolina homemaker Desiree Young is ready to check out on her biggest shopping trip ever. But because of her store's coupon policy, she will need to split her purchases into four separate transactions. I'm doing separate transactions because at this grocery store, you're only allowed to use 10 light coupons per order. I have more than 10, so I need to split it up so that my coupons will double. And the retail cost was $285. And I just spent $17.48. Three down, one to go. With the third transaction, Desiree's total has exceeded $20, almost half of the $55 limit she set for herself. With her largest transaction still to come, her nerves start to take over. I'm feeling a little stressed out. This is my last transaction. I don't want errors. I want to double check every single thing. All right, so I am at right now $493, so almost $500. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to pay $500. My total right now is $647. Let's see if I can get it down below $55. Could I scan your bonus card, please? Sure. There you go. This is a very pressure moment for me. That's why I'm being calm and collective. And I was at 647, and now I'm at 539. Do you have right coupons now? on these yes. items? Let's start with this stack right here. Just as Desiree's total shrinks down to $364, the register locks up. <laughs> what just happened? No more items allowed now. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, refer to our corporate office for just a second. I'll give <laughs> a call and see what we need to do. I'm guessing that I hit my limit of how many items can be scanned. They're on the phone now trying to figure out what to do. My total right now is at $364. And so, yeah. I was stressed out. I thought it was my error. Like, they don't want her to not do it. Because they're kind of making money off. Right? The easiest solution to this okay. problem uh, is I'm going to cash out the total, which okay. is 364.42. Then we're going to have a clean slate. Okay. Then I'm going to scan the remainder of your coupons. Okay. Which will give us a cash total. We'll deduct that from your 364, and then that'll be your grand total. Sounds for this. totally good. To come up with a final tally, the manager will have to scan the coupons while the clerk keeps track of the total on an old fashioned calculator. Any mistake in calculating the transaction could jeopardize the 60 hours of labor Desiree has put into the shopping trip. We're close, mm -hmm. you guys. We're teetering. We're on the edge. We're almost there. I was stressed trying to figure out, okay, what is going to happen? Are we going to have to re-ring this whole order up? Am I going to have to separate my coupons? What is going on? Your total is 55 cents <laughs> for everything you bought. 55 cents. Wow. That's what your total is today, Desiree. 55 cents. <laughs> So that means today you would have spent a grand total of $1,077.66. But with all of your coupons, your grand total was $21.26. That's awesome. She saved a whole lot of money. I put my mission at 55 bucks, so I beat that. So I'm very proud of myself. I'm very excited. Desiree not only accomplished her mission, but scored a load of groceries that includes 20 boxes of toothpaste, 28 boxes of tissue, 45 boxes of cake and cookie mix, 59 packages of candy, and 96 bottled beverages, a retail value of $1,077.66.
Her cost, just $21.26, a 98% savings. I'm addicted to couponing because the thrill that it gives me, it's a job, but I like doing it. If I didn't have coupons, we would probably be living paycheck to paycheck. We would not be where we are today. I don't know. I don't know. Thank <laughs> you. 